let's look at we have looked at the dual modes or the advanced modes in volume based uh, based ventilation now let's look at some of the advanced modes or variations in pressure based of ventilation so two of the most common modes that we hear about is called the bi level or the aprv now bi level ventilation uh, is probably one of the most confusing nomenclatures in ventilation that exists because bi level or bipap is also a terminology commonly used for non invasive ventilation but also companies use the same nomenclature for invasive ventilation so bipap can be used either in a non invasive ventilation or in an invasive ventilation the settings in a both a invasive and a non invasive ventilation are the same but how they work is slightly different we'll try and understand in the uh, slides up ahead so bi level positive uh, airway pressure or bi pap or bi level is basically pressure between two levels you have an inspiratory pressure which in some ventilators is called the ipap and you have a peep which in some ventilators is called the epap so it's a pressure control ventilation with a peep and an inspiratory pressure if it is a non invasive mode it is delivered through a mask if it is an invasive mode it is delivered through an et tube so what is the key difference between a bipap and a pcv a pure pcv is a mode where in a control mode or in an assist control mode between the two pressures the inspiratory pressure and the peep any patient effort is not accepted or tolerated even during the exhalation phase in an assist control a pressure mode if the patient triggers the equipment the patient is not allowed to take their own breath but the next mandatory breath is preponed to coincide with the patient effort this is where is the key difference between traditional pressure control ventilation and bipap or bi level because what the bipap or bi level does is it actually allows you to breathe spontaneously in the cycle either in the inspiratory cycle or in the expiratory cycle so if you put in a patient without any respiratory efforts on a bipap mode it works like a pure pressure control ventilation whatever you set on the equipment is actually delivered to the patient but once the patient efforts start then the patient is actually allowed to breathe on either the inspiratory cycle or the expiratory cycle so how does this happen this happens through something called an active exhalation valve the higher end uh, mechanical ventilators today which offer you bi level mode in invasive also offer you something called a, a, a an active exhalation valve where the exhalation valve actually stays open even during the uh, exhalation otherwise the exhalation valve is actually shut during the exhalation you can see here that uh in this in this equipment this is the uh, pressure versus time the flow versus time and the volume versus time graphs you can see that the patient is allowed to breathe anywhere in the cycle and the flow that is actually generated is uh, is to is to support the patient efforts anywhere in the cycle so bi level uh, positive airway pressure is basically a pressure control ventilation with the ability to breathe anywhere in the cycle so that's the key difference between conventional pcv to a bipap now in uh, when you have a spontaneous breath uh, in a bi level you still have the ipap and the epap you still breathe between the two pressures but each of your efforts is spontaneous but there is also a trigger that can be set at each of these levels and for each of these levels you can also set a pressure support now at uh, as said earlier at either pressure levels the patient can breathe spontaneously the patient can also breathe spontaneously and be supported by a pressure uh, by a pressure support and in case the patient is not breathing spontaneously this works like a timed mode 
with an peep and an inspiratory pressure. Now, uh, in a, in a, in a BiPAP, if I'm allowing the patient to breathe spontaneously, do I have a fixed IEs to E ratio? Yes, I have a fixed IEs to E ratio because the BiPAP actually varies from mandatory breathing or controlled breathing to spontaneous breathing. So in case the patient switches back to uh, less efforts on their own, there has to be an IEs to E to ensure that sufficient volume is being, is being delivered to the patient. So conventional IEs to E ratios of 1 is to 2 or uh, 1 is to 3 are set for these uh, patients. And these patients, this mode specifically, is also one of the lung protective mode because it protects the lung from excessive pressures. You are cutting off the pressures. But then there is also a chance for a patient with higher demands to actually displace more value, more volume. Now, one difference between the terminology in the names of uh, in equipments coming from Europe to the US, the ones in the Europe will be called bi-level or BiPAP, and the ones in uh, the US will call it either a bi-level or other names like a DO level or a smart level. Let's now move to another uh, variant of the BiPAP. This is called an airway pressure release of ventilation. By nature, this is extremely similar to a BiPAP, meaning that you're ventilating on two pressures, a PEEP and an inspiratory pressure. You are having an active exhalation valve. The active exhalation valve is allowing you to unload in case the patient wants to breathe on, on the inspiratory phase. However, the key difference of an APRV vis-a-vis -vis a conventional BiPAP is that in the APRV, the IEs to E ratio is actually inversed. So you have a far longer inspiratory cycle and a short explosive expiratory cycle. So as you can see in this, in this graphic here, if I have to compare this to a conventional graph of a BiPAP, you have a conventional one second or a one out of three inspiratory so one part in the inspiration and two parts in the exhalation in a in a breath cycle whereas here it would actually be four parts in the uh, inspiration one part in the exhalation or it could go up to eight in some equipment so there is a very explosive release of air and one of the advantages of an aprv is also an instantaneous washout of the co2 so as I said, the key difference uh, between a BiPAP and an APRV is just the IEs to E ratio. But conventionally, both the machines, the settings are the same. Now, if I have to look at the various names that this is called in equipments, the uh, Mackay calls it BiVent, Drager and Hamilton and Phillips call it APRV. And uh, this is a mode of ventilation where, uh, which supports spontaneous uh, ventilation. It promotes lung recruitment of the collapsed and poorly uh, ventilated alveoli because you are perfusing the uh, air in the alveoli for a longer period of time. And then the short release with the spontaneous breathing also promotes CO2 elimination. Now, um, just a couple of concepts on the upper and the lower inflection point. The point at which my alveoli opens to start generating volume is my lower inflection point, and the upper inflection point is the point at which any additional increase in pressure does not generate any additional increase in volume. So if I have to classify this more, this is the point at which any increase in pressure is not going to generate any additional increase in volume. So this is the point at which I have alveolar over extension. And this is the pressure that I need to open up my alveoli. So this is the alveoli, the pressure to overcome alveoli, alveoli collapse. And any pressure above this results in a far higher volume, uh, volume jump up. So these are the upper and lower inflection points. I thought I will introduce these concepts now before I move on to uh, where do we use the bi-level and the APRV.
The buy level and APRV, the most common indications of usage are patients of ALI or ARDS, patients where you don't want to change a mode from partial to full, uh, full of ventilatory support, the patients with refractory hypoxemia due to collapsed alveoli, and patients with massive atelectasis. So there is a lot of indications of positive outcomes when it's used in this uh, patient segment. Now the benefits as well as the, the limitations, again, every mode has benefits, but also every mode has something which limits the benefits completely. The supposed benefits of a bi-level and an APRV is it allows inverse ratio of ventilation with or without spontaneous breathing. There is supposedly a less need of sedation and paralysis. There is an improved oxygenation. It allows spontaneous breathing while continuing lung recruitment. And because it allows the patient to load and unload during any part of the cycle, there is an improved patient ventilator sphincterin. Now, what are the limitations? Unlike a conventional pressure control ventilation, for a certain inspiratory pressure, based on the compliance of the lung, a certain volume gets uh, displaced. Here, though I have that pressure, I can, I can load and unload during my inspiratory cycle. So there is a variable tidal volume. Now, patients with a high expiratory resistance, specifically COPD patients, a bilevel is actually contraindicated. The reason why it's contraindicated is in such patients, autopeep is present. If I am allowing varia, if I am allowing breathing on all parts of the cycle, I may actually promote autopeep more. Also, in hemodynamically unstable patients, we should be cautious when using this mode. So we have talked about the benefits, we have talked about some of the limitations on where we should not be using bi-level or we should be more careful while using bi-level. APRV is one of the modes which has a lot of clinical papers written about it, but the usage in these parts of the world is not very high because the feeling is that it's a technically challenging mode to understand and to teach. Most of the uh, most of the places where it is it is used largely is say U.S. where you have respiratory therapists. Also, there is an uh, an understanding that you must have a perfect patient to use uh, something like an APRV, meaning low expiratory re resistance, hemodynamically stable. And where do we get such patients in the ICU? And these modes, though they are good from partial support to fully spontaneous. If we feel that it does not require vigilance continuously, no, it requires constant vigilation. Uh, it, it requires constant vigilance and monitoring because it may also promote autopeak. 